Welcome to the first of my New Jersey road trip series. We begin with a video looking at and exploring the inside of an old A&P store and several other units of a mostly derelict strip mall in Hampton, New Jersey. This shopping area is located south of Washington Borough and north of Glen Gardner in Warren County, New Jersey. The A&P is part of a strip mall that opened in 1996. Today, aside from a handful of original tenants, the shopping center is largely vacant and becoming a distressed property. I shopped here almost exclusively for four years when I lived in the nearby borough. On this day, I had a rare opportunity to go inside the abandoned A&P where I had once shopped. The building is currently up for auction and available to investors. This exclusive inside look, as such, was permitted. This was a very unique opportunity for me. It's one thing to go places like Phillipsburg Mall and other locations that have been closed but still open to the public, but it's another thing to go to a familiar place that is completely shut down, completely closed to the public, and in the state that this place was. Since I left the area, the store did undergo a few changes, but nothing overly significant. I moved out of the area in 2003. When I shopped here, there was not yet any kind of self-checkout. The skylights at the front of this building offer a lot of natural sunlight. This did help illuminate the unlit building on the inside. However, as you see as we go further back into the building, you'll see a lot less light. The colors as such do change a little bit and appear a little bit more yellow. That's simply a matter of the lighting. Many of the fixtures are still there. For the most part, the inside of the store is largely untouched. I was told a few stories about some shelving and other things that have moved around. You will see later in the seafood section, there's a large um, area of probably the lobster tanks, to be honest. I don't quite remember. Um, big section that's missing. I think they had pulled a few things out in areas like that so that they could move uh, larger equipment out easier. Uh, of course, then again, I'm not sure. Just speculating. There was no ventilation running, and it was 80 degrees inside this building. It was rather stuffy. Um, it smelled a lot like a little bit of mold, but a lot of dust. Very dusty, kind of like a concrete dust smell. This section here was always the dairy case, and I remember going down this area a lot because I was always buying orange juice, I was always buying single-serve drinks and stuff to bring to work with me. And then further in this corner was the bakery where, of course, I would buy rolls and donuts and croissants and other such things. I love those pulsating fluorescent lights. There were actually several of them throughout the building. Uh, here's a closer look at the bakery section. Um, the cases are... I think they're somewhat new, actually. I don't quite remember them being there, but I could be wrong. Totally absent, of course, is the hum of ventilation, so there is some good ambient sound. And actually, I want to go ahead and let you enjoy some of that ambient sound before I come back and do a little bit more narration later. So in the meantime, just enjoy the sights and the walkthrough of this abandoned A&P.
I used to get a kick out of confusing the lady at the deli because I used to order like a third of a pound of cheese instead of like a half or a quarter. But hey, that's, you know, about how much I needed. So it was kind of amusing. She got used to it, though. A&P actually stands for the Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, a company that had been around for 157 years before going bankrupt in 2015 and closing all its stores. But my sister and I used to joke around that it stood for awful and pukey. Several stores found new life as other retailers. Other stores like this one and two others in the area of Warren County remain vacant. This was the produce section. I remember this section very clearly. And then up at the front of the store was the floral department. I used to go to the produce section a lot for the um, salad bar. It was the first place that I really went to a salad bar regularly like that. And I would bring that uh, to work with me when I worked in Clinton, New Jersey. Um, so I did, I did actually stop here a lot on my way to work. Um, I also, of course, did regular shopping here as well. It's very surreal seeing this place in this state completely shut down and abandoned. Even though I've moved out of the area for 17 years, I do remember this place quite clearly. I was able to bring home one small souvenir from my so-called museum collection, and that would be an order divider from one of the cash registers. However, it's quite a neat curio because it has the America's Choice logo on it, which actually has changed since the America's Choice brand moved to another retailer. At the time, America's Choice was the in-house A&P brand. Now in the freezer section, there's this odd standing uh, shelving area in the middle. You can see from the floor that it looks like there was something there, and actually there was. Um, I remember coming down here, and that used to be where some of the frozen vegetables were and some of the french fries and stuff that I used to buy. Um, at the time, it was uh, one of those low freezer, you know, uncovered freezer sections. Sorry, no dial tone, but you do see the power was on in the phone. Uh, these computers are very ancient, and you can tell they're, you know, grocery store specific. You will see later in this video, the only other thing alive in the building, other than those of us who were inside, was a very small spider. I was able to get a picture of him with my macro lens. Look out for him. He's sneaky. Now stay tuned for the end of this video because there are some bonuses to be had. I was also able to gain access to some of the vacant units that were attached to the strip mall. As things stand, there are only three retailers still open. A pizza place, a Chinese place, and a dry cleaner. All of which are supposedly owned by the original owners. If you do happen to come to this area, I do highly recommend the eateries here. So please do patronize those businesses if you come by. I promise you it'll be worth your while. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the bonus features and the slideshow at the end of this video.